Mr. Chairman and members of the, uh, of the House, today's a remarkable day because after 10 years, we're going to have an up or down vote on whether the poorest people in our nation who are working every day and at the end of the year end up poor deserve a raise. That's what we're going to do today. For 10 years, we've struggled to have this vote, and now we're finally going to have it. We've had a lot of excuses why we couldn't have it. We've had votes hijacked, and we've had votes pulled off the floor. But we can never have this vote, and today, the beginning of the 100 hours, we're going to have this vote. We're going to have this vote because this is a major concern. This is a major concern to, American, to the American society. What so many of my colleagues made clear today in the debate is that after you've stalled this vote for 10 years, this goes way beyond the dollars and cents of the minimum wage. It goes to the core value of America and economic justice and social justice and fairness and whether or not every American is going to get to participate in the American economic system and also be able to provide for their children and their families. But my colleagues didn't disappoint me today on the other side of the aisle. We have one more bump in the road. This last moment, they've offered us a motion to recommit where they say, if you offer your employees a health care plan, you can keep the minimum wage at 515. Now, it doesn't say that that health care plan has to be affordable. It doesn't say what the deductibles are, the co-payments. But I'm sure if you're a minimum wage worker at 515 today, a wage that's 10 years old, I'm sure you can pay the co-payments and the deductibles and the premiums. That won't be a problem. What is it you don't understand about being poor? What is it you don't understand? You're stuck at 515 in today's world. You can't buy the gasoline to go to work, the bread to put on the table, the milk out of the refrigerator. Your utilities are going up, the rent is going up, and now you say, well, by the way, if you can pay for a health care plan, you can stay at the minimum wage, you lucky ducky. I don't think that's what America was talking about when 89% of them said they want this Congress to raise the minimum wage, not trade it in, not trade it in. They didn't ask us to trade in the increase in the minimum wage for some phantom health care proposal. You know, what the average, you know what the average premium is for a family? The average premium is $10,880. Okay, that's good plans and bad plans together. Cut it in half. You're at the minimum wage, you're going to pay $5,000? Cut it in half again. You're at the minimum wage. You can pay another $2,000 for your health care? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's get on with the nation's business, with the people's business, and with the minimum wage workers' business. Let's reject this motion and pass this bill now. Without objection.